Today, I will introduce the most useful lie in chemistry and physics, the Bohr model of the atom. In the Bohr model, electrons hold specific orbits around the nucleus. When something causes an electron to change to a different orbit, such as being exposed to a hot flame, that change corresponds to a specific color of light. The Bohr model explains why elements have unique line spectra, as we saw with the flame tests in our week three lab exercise. Up until this point, we've been learning some neat properties of light, but we have not really connected these to any specific chemical concept. So what do all these properties of light have to do with chemistry? Well, to put it simply, all light comes from atoms. Specifically, all light comes from electron transitions inside atoms. In 1918, the Danish physicist Niels Bohr developed a model of the atom as a tiny solar system. The positive nucleus sits in the center, like the sun, and electrons orbit around the nucleus like planets. Very importantly, only specific orbit energies are allowed, and these are numbered from one upward. Electrons can jump between the energy levels, a process which always involves the emission or absorption of light. We define the ground state of an atom as when the electrons are in their lowest possible energy levels. Electrons are happiest when they're in the ground state. Remember from the last lesson that energy is quantized. We represent that with a flight of stairs. The Bohr model reflects the quantized energy of electrons in atoms. An electron can be in energy level one or energy level two, but it can never be in between two energy levels. When an atom absorbs a photon of light, the energy in that photon causes an electron to jump to a higher energy level. The difference between the energy levels is exactly equal to the energy of the photon. When an electron falls to a lower energy level, the atom emits this energy in the form of a photon. The energy of the photon is exactly equal to the difference between the two energy levels. In this animation, we will start with a hydrogen atom in the ground state. Its single electron is in the lowest energy level, energy level one. Now, let's say this atom is hit with an electric charge that causes an electron to absorb enough energy to move up to the fifth energy level. This electron is no longer in the ground state and wants to get rid of its excess energy. The electron will pick a lower energy level at random and fall down to it. If it falls to the third energy level, it will release a photon of light with energy corresponding to the difference between energy levels. In this case, a photon of blue light. Since the electron is still in an excited state, it wants to continue falling to lower energy levels until it reaches the ground state. If it falls all the way down to the bottom energy level, it will release another photon of light. Notice that the difference the electron fell is longer this time, which corresponds to a greater difference in energy. This photon of UV light has more energy than a photon of blue light. Every element has unique energy levels, meaning that every element will have unique colors that it can emit. The energy levels of many metals correspond to photons in the visible region of the light spectrum, a fact that can be revealed during flame tests. In fact, it's this very phenomenon that gives fireworks their fantastic colors. It's also the reason that a neon sign is its characteristic red color. If you run an electric current through a confined gas, that gas will emit photons which correspond to differences in energies of their electronic structure. You probably know already that we can use a prism to diffract light into a rainbow, allowing us to distinguish the underlying colors. When scientists send light emitted from a single element through a prism, it separates the element's colors into specific lines. This is called the element's line spectrum. Since each element has unique energy levels and emits unique frequencies of light, 
Each element also has a unique line spectrum. You can think of each element with its own spectral fingerprint. This is how astronomers can determine which elements are in stars hundreds of light years from Earth. While each element has its own emission spectrum, we'll keep it simple and only focus on hydrogen for now. When an excited electron in hydrogen falls to the second energy level, it emits a photon of visible light. There are four ways a photon can fall to the second energy level in hydrogen. Each corresponds to a different line in hydrogen's line spectrum. The furthest fall is from energy level six, and it has the most energy, the highest frequency. It's a violet color. The shortest fall is from energy level three, and it has the lowest energy with the lowest frequency. It makes red light. There are actually many, many more colors that a hydrogen atom can emit, but puny humans are only able to see the ones in the visible region of the spectrum. If the electron falls all the way down to the ground state, it emits an ultraviolet photon of light. If the electron falls to the second energy level, it emits a visible photon of light. If the electron falls to the third energy level, it emits an infrared photon. If we use the frequencies of light to calculate the difference in spacings between energy levels, we see that the difference between the first and the second energy level is much greater than the distance between all of the other energy levels combined. The relative energy difference decreases as the energy levels increase. Another way to visualize this is to imagine the hydrogen atom as a staircase with the nucleus at the bottom of the stairs. The steps get smaller the further up we go. An electron has to absorb energy to reach a higher step. And when an electron falls to a lower step, it releases energy in the form of a photon. All right, it's time to introduce important equation number three, the Rydberg equation. The Rydberg equation can be used to calculate the wavelength of a photon from the energy levels in the hydrogen atom. There is another Rydberg form of the Rydberg equation, which calculates the energy difference between the energy levels. You'll be given both forms of the Rydberg equation anytime you need to use them on an exam. Let's give the Rydberg equation a shot in a practice problem. What type of light is emitted when an electron in hydrogen falls from the sixth energy level to the first energy level? Pause the video and try solving this yourself. We'll start by noting that the final energy level is one and the initial energy level is six. We'll plug that into the Rydberg equation and simplify the right side. Then if we take the inverse of the right side, we can get wavelength of nine times 10 to the negative eight meters. Referencing the electromagnetic spectrum to the right, we see that this wavelength corresponds to some high energy ultraviolet light. To summarize the most important points of today, think of the Bohr model of the atom, the solar system model of the atom. All atoms have only certain energy levels that their electrons can live in. The higher the energy level, the further away it is from the nucleus, and the higher the potential energy of an electron in that energy level. The lowest energy configuration is called the ground state. Electrons can only transition between energy levels by absorbing or emitting light. The energy H times nu of a photon corresponds to the difference between two energy levels. When an electron lives in a higher energy level, the atom is considered to be in an excited state.